On this Wednesday of Holy Week, welcome in the name of Jesus to this, our midweek uh, worship service, gathering around God's gifts of word and sacrament. We will hear today of the burial of Jesus in that passion narrative from Mark's Gospel. And so let us begin. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents over disaster. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 15. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was death, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Please join your hearts and voices in the hymn, 
Jesus, I will ponder now. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lenten Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At some point in life for each of us, we face the task of caring for a loved one as death draws near. And then after death, making arrangements for laying that loved one to rest. That is what is before us today as Jesus is buried following his crucifixion. In this Holy Week, when we contemplate anew all that Jesus has done for us and for our salvation, the burial of Jesus marks that final act of caring and respect that his friends and followers can do for him. We want to do the same in our own lives ensuring that the earthly remains of our loved ones are treated with the utmost dignity and respect. Jesus' friends are named here in the text, Joseph of Arimathea, as well as Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph. Joseph is identified in all four Gospels as being the one who stepped forward to ask Pontius Pilate for the body of Jesus. And Joseph, uh, is a very brave thing for him to do, and in doing this, he was identified as a respected member of the council, that is, the Sanhedrin. He might also have been, in doing so, he might have been identified as a partisan, a supporter of Jesus, and so could have gotten himself into trouble for this association by making this request. Joseph is further identified in the text as someone who also was himself looking for the kingdom of God. Luke's gospel tells us that Joseph had not agreed with the council's action in condemning Jesus. And John's gospel reveals that Joseph was actually a disciple of Jesus though secretly, for fear of the Jews. All of this gives us insight as to who this individual was and the role he had in seeking Jesus' body for burial, providing his own newly hewn rock tomb in which to lay Jesus. In antiquity, the execution of a condemned man did not mark the final moment of his humiliation. Roman law dictated the loss of all honors in death. Even the right of burial was determined by magisterial decree. We're told by historians that more often than not, a family's request for the body of a loved one who had been executed was honored, but not in cases of high treason, which is what Jesus was convicted of by Roman law. This too helps us to understand that it really did take great courage for Joseph to do what he did. And had he not done this, the body of Jesus might never have been buried at all. To suffer the terrible indignity 
of not being buried is the final humiliation that no one should suffer, not even a condemned person who has been put to death. Jewish law stipulated that the bodies of those executed were to be removed before sundown so that the entire land itself would not fall under God's curse. The law of Moses made clear that God's own curse was upon those who were hanged upon a tree. And this is exactly what Jesus became for you and for me. Cursed by God by taking the full punishment of our sin upon himself so that we might be blessed by God as Paul the Apostle writes. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. With Joseph's request, Mark's gospel alone records Pilate's surprise that Jesus was already dead. It was very common for those crucified to remain alive for two and even three days while on the cross. And so Pilate needed to confirm the truth of Jesus' death. Having done this, he then released the body to Joseph of Arimathea. None of the Gospels record whether Jesus' mutilated and bloody body was washed before burial. But it would have been highly unlikely for jo Joseph to buy the linen shroud for Jesus without first washing his body. So important was this in Jewish practice that it was a permitted action even on the Sabbath. And so Jesus was laid in that tomb. Mark's account speaks of some sort of stone which could be rolled into place. This may have been only a boulder, but if the tomb was an exceptionally fine one, it may have had an elaborate disc-shaped stone about a yard in diameter, like a millstone, which was placed in a wide slot cut into the rock. And since the groove into which the stone fitted sloped toward the doorway, it could easily be rolled into place but to roll the stone aside would require the strength of several men. Only a few tombs with such rolling stones are known in Palestine, but all of them date from the time of Jesus. Once more, the prophetic words of Isaiah 53 are here fulfilled in Jesus, and they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Two of the women who had witnessed Jesus' death upon the cross were witnesses again at his burial, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph. Scripture does not record any outward mourning or grief on their part. And so we can imagine that they bore all of this in silent pain. Although the witness and testimony of women were not accepted in Jewish culture, it is the women who will be the first witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. Thanks be to God that in Jesus' death is not the final word. The grief of Good Friday and the death of Jesus will give way to the joy of Jesus' resurrection on Easter morning. May the Lord who has begun this good work among us bring it to completion in the day of Christ Jesus.
Amen. And the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly, your spirit, your soul, and your body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death and burial of Jesus, your chosen and anointed Son, you have destroyed death and have hallowed the graves of your saints to be beds of hope. As your Son was laid in the tomb by those closest to him, keep our loved ones who now rest in you and at the last raise up to everlasting life all who trust in you, that we may all share in the endless life, joy, and peace won for us through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, who lives to make intercession for us, who has taken the sting of death and robbed the grave of its victory, to whom is given the name which is above every name, we pray that you would graciously remember all who are in need, the sick or hospitalized, those who are grieving or sorrowful, those to whom death draws near, those who are downcast or discouraged, those who are hungry or homeless, those who are refugees, immigrants, or displaced persons, those who are traveling near or far, those who live or work in difficult or dangerous places, those who are bearing heavy burdens and filled with anxiety, and those whose names and needs are known to you alone. Grant that we may be yours in life and in death, and sing your praise forever in that place which you have prepared for all those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, who at this hour bore our sins in your own body on the tree of the cross, so that we, being dead to sin, might live unto righteousness, have mercy upon us now and at the hour of our death. Grant to us, your servants, with all others who devoutly remember your blessed passion, a holy and peaceful life in this world, and by your grace, eternal glory in the life to come, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to kneel or remain seated for confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.
And now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you gave your Son both as the atoning sacrifice for our sin and the model of the godly life. Enable us always to receive him with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his, that we may abide in faith unto the day of his coming. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in our sending hymn. 